following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Exploding down the sideline. This is Hanging with the Boys, presented by Wingstop, where flavor gets its wings. You're looking at a live look at Tostitos Plaza at the Dallas Cowboys headquarters in Frisco, Texas. And guys, it's an overcast, but I tell you what, it is hot enough to fry an egg out there on the star. And look, I've been told by management to calm down a little bit. No, keep the energy. But you know I can't do it. I cannot do it. He's a rebel. Hey, we back in the building. You are rocking with the best cowboy nation. This is another episode of Hanging with the Boys. And I'm going to do introductions in no particular order. My former cowboy wide receiver, Super Bowl champion, Isaiah Standback. And the man that should have Denzel Washington's line mm. from training day before I introduce him, saying, I'm the man up in this piece. Kurt, Amen, Corner, <laughs> Daniels, I could and just go with the other line with, from Denzel. I'm putting Trans cases Dan. on all. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. The other line, he was in the <laughs> little boy. He was like, right, I'm just going with that line. No, cannot, no, cannot go with go that go line. Uh, but former cowboy who I receive that's always going to interrupt me in the middle of yes, my thought process. Absolutely. But the guy that's going to change the game uh, on these deep blue docu series. I've been hearing a lot of good things mm. about this man. I'm telling you, I'm hearing whispers of. Some Emmy talk. If, if, this is changing. My guy, Jesse Holly. Let's put it out there, fellas. How y'all doing? Good, good man. You doing all right? They can't I'm, give me an Emmy. They don't. They can't give me an Emmy. Why? We were just talking about some things. See, that may vault you to what we were talking about pre-show. Because the the, the level of <laughs> ignorance I would have with that Emmy, like I'm putting it on a chain. Like I'm no, around. Don't like, do that, the please. please. They give me an Emmy. I'm 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 going to get some sort of I'm gonna hook it up I'm gonna get latch on it and just be that's what I'm saying you just can't give me nice stuff yeah, yeah, you can't, I'm not gonna whatever say what you want to say on there yeah. yeah please <laughs> he that, would do that that might detract Rihanna you throw Emmy on your necklace oh you know what. Let's go. Let's go, Deep Blue. Let's get this Emmy for your boy. <laughs> well, guys, you know what time it is. Today is Christmas in California. Yes. Yeah. We get an opportunity to read the ingredients on the box mm -hmm. to see what some guys are made of. And, fellas, for you, who you've been a part of this for a couple of years, so tell me about it. Some of your fondest memories of putting these pads on for the first time and click clack being in action. <laughs> Man, my first time putting on pads for the Dallas Cowboys was my first time in the league. Um, I was actually coming off injury. So I was a little bit late, later mm -hmm. than everybody else. I was still rehabbing. But my first rep, I mean, I, I, first of all, I walked out there and I had every pad on possible. So, <laughs> so, right. so everybody was clowning me, man. And my buddy, Terry, you know, TG, uh, Patrick Creighton, T.O., all those guys were clowning <laughs> me because they told me I looked like the little the little mannequin that they have the on a poster, poster that has a <laughs> pads on. <laughs> you got to remember, I never, had never played receiver in my life. So I'm walking out there, you know, fresh off an injury, trying to make sure I wear everything right. And then I go out there and then my first one-on-ones, you know who lined up against me? Who? Champ Gina. Bailey. Ooh. There you go. There Oof. you go. Hello, NFL. There you go. I ran with the only route I knew how to run. Go. A go. Go. <laughs> See you Give later. Me Give me that thing. <laughs> and that's all I'm one for one against Champ Bailey. That's all I know. Hey, that's all I know. That's, I'm going to leave it there. I, my first experience with pads, I was in Cincinnati. And for us, it was <laughs> – I was learning how to play special teams. I never played special teams mm -hmm. in college. And I remember I was the wing – and um, Left or right? Right wing. Mm. I was right wing. And we were working on these drills of how to get off the ball. And so they were just mixing guys in there, mixing guys in there. And Frosty Rucker. Oh, oh wow. Wow. He used to chase me in college. <laughs> Frosty Rucker lines up. You know, Again, I'm thinking he's going to do some sort of swim move Oop. or try to do something with speed. Frosty literally just took his – Drug you. He just took everything in him, grabbed me by the inside of my mm -hmm. pad, put his helmet mm -hmm. right in the middle of my chest, and walk, dog walked mm -hmm. me <laughs> into the punter. Yeah. And I was just like, Coach – remember the special team coach, Darren Simmons, he was like, you got to get low. You got to – I said, Shoot how – like, like, like Frosty at that time was probably like 275, 280, 290 around that time. Yeah. I'm 215, 210, whatever. I'm like, how do I? He's like, you better figure it out or you're going to be out of a Ooh, job real soon. Man. And I'm just like, and you don't want to cut a guy like, 
You know, you don't. You know, yeah. Fauci was was one of the guys on that defensive line. You don't want to cut a guy in practice. <laughs> Quick set. I'm, I'm like, this is the only. But I had. <laughs> Quick set. I'm just learning this position, and I mean, like, like literally, he picked me up, yep. and I was sitting in the punter's lap. He didn't get. Yeah. He couldn't even kick it. And like he caught it. It was like one step, and I was like. I, Hello. He should have gave me twenty dollars for the lap dance. Yeah. The what? the image that I have of you is like a baby in one of those frontal carriages, yeah. like that's yeah. like Frosty yeah. Rucker was patting you on the head yeah. on the way. Every, everybody who's played punt, on your punt, you know, cover team, you know, what I'm saying protection has gotten ran back like that. <laughs> everybody. And when you start talking about Frosty Rucker, Frosty used to chase me. I got plenty of pictures of Frosty when he was at SC yeah. chasing me uh, when I was playing quarterback at University of Washington. The man is large and he can run. Yeah. So when he decided, he probably saw him as fresh meat, and he probably saw him like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Whoa, Give me to that. the NFL, Give me all that. young fella. Yeah, young and so you got that. There are going to be plenty of guys today mm-hmm. yeah. getting their welcome yeah. to. Baptized. Yeah, baptized today. Yeah. Uh, in, in this first padded practice in Oxnard, and so many people in Cowboy Nation are looking forward to this because, as you guys have stated and have said extensively, yeah. that the Underwear Olympics has to come to an end, yeah, and bye-bye. we got to figure out who these guys are. Yeah. And for me, I, and I'm going to extend this question out to you guys, there are a lot of guys that you are looking forward to to seeing today. It, to get that proof is in the pudding moments. And I'll start this off. My guy is Simi Fuhoko. Mm. And I believe that he is in a position right now where his opportunity to actually make the team is on special teams. I mean, great, great wide receiver, but he's going to have to do something just like you guys. he never been exposed to special teams. So does he have the will and the know-how and the knack to do just those things? You've said it. You've talked about it extensively, how, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's layered when you're on special teams. It's a lot to remember, but that's his track in getting to, on this team. So for you guys, and I'll start with you, Kurt. Who is your who is your guy that you're looking most forward to, uh, to seeing? Well, there's a couple, and um, they're rookies. You know, you want to see how these guys match up. This is baptism by fire, like you guys said. Um, Michael Parsons is the obvious guy. He's supposed to be our stud. He's gonna he's our top pick. He's got to come out and be a, a dog right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, he's looked good so far, but you know it's about to get real. The other is really is in that defensive line and you know we heard a lot of talk about especially Quentin Bohanna is huge man he's expected to really disrupt things um, Nate I think had said he he saw some quickness in him out there uh, at the OTAs mm-hmm. and all that what's it going to be like now when he's actually guys are banging on him and stuff is he really going to be able to do what he claims he can do mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's three guys I'm looking for, um, and I'm gonna go over back back door on what you said, Kurt, on the, on the defensive line. I want to see where we were hurting the most last year, and that's on the interior defensive line. Um, that's when you see what you have when these guys get these pads on, because they really can't do nothing with no pads right. on, right? It, it, it is it's kind of like pitter patter or whatever. When these pads get on, now the offensive linemen have to handle a bull rush. Now the offensive linemen have to worry about these guys punching them in their chest. So I'm looking forward to seeing Big Bo. I want to see Big Bo and his capabilities, and I want to see Big Urban. I want to see where Urban, he's supposed to be one of the league's best run stoppers. Let's see if he is, right? 6'8", 330 pounds, whatever he is. It's a large human being. Let's see what he can do. Um, and then on the outside, okay, on the outside, I want to see Nation Wright. Nation Wright has them go-go gadget arms like I've talked about in the past, <laughs> right? Them E-Hondas, right? He was putting hands on guys all through OTAs. Now guys have a chance to hit back. Now guys can actually come off and they can thud you up with their helmet right in your face mask, right? Now we can actually see, is he that physical or was he just playing bully because those guys couldn't really do much back? Can I can I ask interrupt ask a question here? How much and we know the pads are on. We know they can't tackle you to the ground. Mm-hmm. But how physical does it really Ooh, get? I mean, from, I mean, is it game yeah. physical? I mean, you're full blow. It's pretty doggone physical. I mean, yeah. for most positions, right? I mean, especially if we start talking about the outside. I mean, pretty much everything is is full go. Mm-hmm. When you start yeah. looking at the, so you can look at receivers and cornerbacks as pretty much this is what you're going to get aside from you know big hits and things of that nature, right? And their abilities to tackle. You don't see that into the preseason games. On the interior defensive line, you get mostly what you, what you're going to get because by the time guys are on the ground, it's plays pretty much over. Yeah. So you can get the push, you can get the shade, you can get exactly how much on the edge they're really going to get, how much on half man. Are they are they dipping that short shoulder? Can they really get to the quarterback? Even though the plays are still going to be blown dead, are they beating their guys right legitimately? Because their plays are, are played from the hips up. Yeah, I, I think the the toughest position to evaluate right now has got to be the interior line Absolutely. and offensive line Absolutely. because they there's really not a lot of contact. Yeah. But now when you put these pads on, now we get an opportunity to see yep. if you're worth your salt. What about you, Jess? You you hit it right on the head, and I'm going I'm going booking. I'm going and, and 
not that these guys have to prove anything. They're already well established. Mm-hmm. One, one will be a Hall of Famer. The other one has a potential, if he stays healthy, to probably be in that conversation as one of the Cowboys' great offensive linemen. But I'm going booking. I'm going LC, okay. and I'm going Tyron. Hmm. And the biggest reason why is I want to see how these guys have come back from these injuries. We know that LC had the hip surgery this offseason. Uh, we know what Tyron has dealt with a number of different injuries from the knee to the back to the neck to the arm. You know, you got to be a pretty large human being where they have to take a legit leg knee brace and put it on your elbow. Like that's how big of a human he is. And now when the pads come on, I, I, I want to see things from them that that assures me that they're confident in their technique. And we heard Nate talk about it when it comes to Lyle Collins. It's to push away from the offensive line, right? When the ball is snapped and you got Randy Gregory and Bradley and I, and you got these young guys, maybe start having some Michael Parser rushing or, so, or some uh, uh, um, uh, Jalen Smith rushing off that edge. Can Lyle push away from the line with enough force that he gets he gets back into a set? And then now once you're set, can I have enough power in my hip thrust to catch a guy and now maneuver him? Same thing with Tyron. He has – Tyron has some of the the sweetest feet for a 330-pound dude. I mean, his quickness, twinkle toes. Yeah. But now I want to see it. Where is he at health-wise when he when he has to sit down and you know and pass set and do all the different things? You got the big guys in the middle. There's going to be some some tackle in stunts. So now when you got Big Urban coming around the edge, when you got Big mm-hmm. Bo coming around the edge, and all these guys coming around the edge, how is Tyron setting and now taking on that brunt force from those guys? How do you, how do you balance that though? Because you don't. Want, I mean, Tyron's got neck issues. That's back That's what issues. I was just about to hit on mm-hmm. Tyron. Right in terms of right now, he's able to lock guys out, kind of keep his arm arms away from guys. Now guys are going to want to get up in there. Guys are going to want to come off the edge and they want to want to bury their head. Is he still going to kind of try to keep that head back or is he going to be willing to put his head in there and get some contact? This so is what I want to see. Yeah. This, this is what I want to see. Do you I, need I w- to protect him at all though? You don't you need him you need him to come September. Only way you protect him is by not letting him get reps. And that's the yeah. biggest thing. Like we need to know. We like we need to know what we're going to have with you. You yeah. know, and, and for Tyron that's the most difficult thing about pr- practicing the interior. You, there is no, you can't take a play off. Like there is no, you know, when we got pads on, and you tell me it's full go. Everything but tackling to the ground is mm-hmm. you, acceptable. I, you mm-hmm. got to go hard. That, that's the only way Tyron learns. That's the only way a guy like Micah Parsons learns because you have to, be, you have to simulate these reps. And we've seen clips where Micah Parsons and Tyron has been uh, uh, working each other after practice, and, and it's and it's great to see because I remember when I was playing in in you as well, uh, Zeke. I remember Tyron and Demarcus Ware after practice. Uh-huh. Young Tyron, mm-hmm. right? Young, young Tyron to go and get to a crafty style, veteran right? like Demarcus Ware. So it's like paying it forward. But the only way you get a chance to truly see it is to say, hey, we got to rip the bandit off and you have to go. Now, after a couple of days, you'll go, all right, you know, you get your vet day off or we'll say, all right, Tyron, you're not going to be in goal line or you're not yeah. going to be in these. You know, you may only do a certain amount of it. But for those guys, I need to see that they're able to hold up I'd rather see that now and then potentially make the adjustments going forward than we get to week one and all of a sudden he can't do it. And now we're scrambling because we let guys go, guys are playing other positions, and you don't, you know what I'm saying? You just don't want to have that mix up right in, what, later on in the year. What uh, uh, McCarthy had this quote I think it's important to go through what I call practice etiquette and the ethics of go, what on, go on in a padded practice because at the end of the day, the extracurricular activity was kind of cool in the 90s, but it's not anymore. Um, it's a waste of time. So is there an etiquette to these physical padded practices other than just don't take them to the ground? Keep guys up. Stay off the quarterback. When the whistle blows, the play is done. And here's the thing. <laughs> you can have as much etiquette as you want. There's going to be some – Stuff is going to happen. Gonna be, yeah. and, and, the, and the reason being, we talked about it before, there's this level of alpha. Like Tyra's going to let Micah Parsons know – Hey, young fella, <laughs> like, we're, we're glad to have you. I'm not a multiple-time All-Pro because they just gave it to me. Bop, bop. And let me show you how this really goes, <laughs> yeah. right? And, 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 and Zach Martin's going to have the same thing. Uh, okay, I get it, Big Bull. They're all excited about you. But let me show you why they consider me one of the best guards in all of football. Bop, bop. And, and those young guys are going to come out and establish themselves. And, and, and sometimes that can get a little bit heated. And we talked about it before. <laughs> 
a couple days of camp, start seeing the same guys over yeah. and over and over again. You get a little testy, and that stuff happens, but it's a part they of the game. They don't tell, like, uh, oh, you know, they a, a young rookie lineman, you know, he, they're not going to tell him, okay, that's that's Leighton Vander-ish. He's got injury problems. He's supposed to be a starter this year. No. You know, they're no, not going to no, tell it's wide him. Open. No, yeah. those conversations yeah. aren't happening. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, is we talked about Dak and his injury and the way that, you know, is he going to be on a pitch count? What is there going to be that aha moment where he feels like, look, I'm, I'm primed and I'm ready to go. You still look for the same thing in Tyron Smith. Is he going to be there? Is Lyle going to have that moment where he feels like he's back? But as far as the rights of passes and initiating these rookies, that's going to happen anyway. You know, these guys are going to get initiated today yeah. uh, or sometime soon. Mm -hmm. But wanted to go on to the uh, defense because yesterday in camp, guys were raving about how good of a day that the defense had. And, you know, look, we've talked about the slow progression of the defense and the offense maybe having to set the tone for the defense early to protect these guys because they're learning a the new system. And so much has been made about Dan Quinn's system and the simplified approach to uh, his system. What do you guys think when you hear simplified approach in Dan Quinn? Do you think that's a recipe for disaster? Or do you think that's a recipe for success with a defense that couldn't get any worse than they were last year? I think it's a recipe for success. I think, you know, when, when people hear – people don't want to hear the, 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 the highest level of competition and simple. <laughs> people don't like the way that sounds. Nope. Yeah. People don't like the way that sounds. But people, what people don't understand is when you get to this level and you have a coach that's as, um, as, as, as highly attained as, as um, Quinn is, you need guys to play fast. You need guys to play, play fast. Dan Quinn's going to put you in position to be successful. So by doing that, he needs to simplify things. He needs to make it so that you know exactly what your role on this team is and what your position is and why we have you on this field at this particular time, at this particular moment, and what influence we need you to have, right? And in order to do that, I need you thinking this much instead of this much, right? Yeah. I don't need you thinking, hey, well, okay, well, if this, guy, if this guy shifts over here, okay, now i got to do this, and now this guy's going to go. No, 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 no. I need you to shoot this gap. And I need you to get there quick, fast, in a hurry, right? And this is what I need you to do. I need you to take that half of his body and blow through it so that our other guy can cross face, whatever it may be, whatever your assignment is, right? So by having simplified, I think West Coast offense, right? You have your set number of routes, right? You have your set concepts. And then guess what? You have a gazillion different formations that you run them out of, <laughs> right? You run them. You run it from different motions. You run different shifts. But guess what? I'm running the same, same route. route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. running the same route. So when I line up, I'm running the same route. I'm just shifting over here and then I'm motioning over here. It looks like a lot to you, but it's really simple on the inside. So Dan Quinn has the full innate ability to be able to do that by giving guys specific assignments. By, but by on the offensive side, it looking like straight mayhem. And, and the thing is, is the analogy that I'll use is no one builds a house from roof down, right? You build it from foundation up. And once your foundation is solid, then you can get freaky, right? But if you, you can't start out freaky and then try to get a, a solid foundation. So when you simplify things, you give guys a base of what we're going to work from. And, and normally, normally when you get into these type of activities, when you're doing OTAs and mini camps and now training camps, the defense usually has a leg up. Like the use, defense mm -hmm. usually shines early on because cover three is cover three, mm -hmm. right? Cover four is cover four. So if you get to that level, you've run cover three your whole life. You've run a cover four your whole life. So those concepts don't change. And now once I begin to lay that foundation, I can start – Getting that done, guys are getting confidence. Confidence is such Everything. a huge, yep. huge, huge, huge component when it comes to defensively, all, all across the board, but especially defensively because you, if you mess up, it, it can be a really big mess up. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you never know when that mess up might come. It might come in the first quarter. It might come in the fourth quarter. And that might be the deciding factor of the game. So you got to build the confidence. And the easiest way to build confidence is making things simple. And when guys feel confident, they're able to run around and they're not thinking. Now, you, now once you get that going, now you can start saying, okay, now we're going to add this twist to it. I got the fundamentals down. I got the foundation down. Now I can start adding these different things to it. And that will happen. The progression of that type of installment will happen during training camp. And what it will also do is – It'll start showing you who's the guy that are studying, yeah. able to retain information, able to go out here and take classroom studying to the field. And those are the guys who make rosters. 
because you can have all the athletic ability in the world. And I remember when the Cowboys had a guy by the name of Bruce Carter. He's a, he's a Tar Heel guy. I, yep. I love Bruce. Bruce had all the athleticism in the world. He looked like Jalen Smith. Like he, and I can always tell Bruce, you should be able to tell – like you should be so close to Sean Lee, you should be able to tell me what, when he farts, what did he have for lunch? <laughs> because Sean was always in the classroom, always studying. He always the mental part of the game. And Bruce just tried to use athleticism. And it does you no good if you're going 100 miles an hour to the right with all that athleticism and the play's going to the left. So yeah. that, that, that's the so, biggest so, thing. And, and, and give people more of a visual, even more so aside from the fart, is uh, <laughs> don't want everybody to think about We got about, camp eyes. Yeah, we got yeah. camp eyes going. We get freaky with our cover. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff going so, on, man. Let's I want, go. I want people to think about Pittsburgh Steelers when they had Trey Palomalu, right? Trey Palomalu was playing a very basic defense but he looked like he was all over the place, mm -hmm. right? Troy Palomalo, you might find him on the end of the dog online, the end of the screen, line of scrimmage. You might find him in the, in the, in the box, in the A-gap. But guess what? He was going to run back and play cover three. <laughs> but that's right? the thing. You talk about a Dick LeBeau system that was the, the layers to mm -hmm. that and then making it simple and having yep. a guy like Troy Palomalo who can ad-lib and do his Absolutely. own thing. But, but what about you, Kurt? Well, what are your I questions for you. Okay. One um, – I mean, Dan Quinn's – they're starting to say the cover three is predictable. And Dan Quinn's defense the last few years, I don't think we're all that great. So is that – I guess part of – and going along with that, you know, Marinelli and Garrett's last year, everybody complained the defense was too vanilla. Mm -hmm. And then last year you had McCarthy and Nolan, and everybody said they threw too much at them. They're, they're trying to do too much. So how do you find that balance of playing fast mm -hmm. but – keeping the offense guessing. So I understand this. There's only so many coverages in the NFL, so I don't want people to think that everybody <laughs> out here is geniuses, right? They're, football is very simple, yeah. right? Now, there's ways to make it look complicated, but at the end of the day, it's very simple. So there's pre-snap reads and there's post-snap snap reads, and that's usually where all the confusion takes place, mm -hmm. right? I want it to look like something, but guess what? When the ball snapped, Guys are going to yeah. a certain position. Guys yeah. have assignments. And those assignments are across the board from doggone middle school all the way up to the NFL. Now, guess what? If Jesse's playing corner, he might be playing corner in one play and uh, in, in the cover three. But now, this time, I have him running over, and now he's playing the flat. Guess what? It's still cover three. It is. It's still cover three. He's just playing out of position. So it's not that complicated um, as, as people are making it seem. But you like, like, like to Jesse's point, you want to simplify it enough, and then you can get to the point of using, using your athleticism. No matter what coverage guys are running in defense, the defensive coordinators are going to run, it always comes down to your front seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to go to, to your point, uh, Kurt, when we talk about cover three, there's a reason why Dan Quinn was pounding the table for long, tall, rangy guys. Don't let them and, the, the and the reason is I disrupt the timing at the line of scrimmage, right? I get, I get my hands on them. The timing is disrupted. Now, if I'm running cover three, there's these holes in cover three. Mm -hmm. How do I eliminate the holes? Yes, I do it up Time. front. Timing, yes. But also now, think of the Syracuse 2-3 zone, right? Uh, 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 oh, uh, Jim Behan, he has all these long guys, and they're covering space because their arm reach – you you, you look, cut down the holes. Look, look at look at the look at the guys that we drafted. Look at the guys that he's brought in. Six three, six, six four, three, six yeah. four. Guys are, have these long wingspans. Yep. So where I can't get there with my feet, or I can't get there necessarily with my body, I cut off those windows with my with, with my my wingspan yeah. and my reach. So if I'm six foot three, that window that used to be there on that five nine five ten corner is no longer there. Go back to the Seattle days. Just go back and watch those. Tapes yeah. and see how many deflections you saw Richard Sherman or Brandon Browner just hit back, and you saw guys running to the football yeah, because they were awesome. saying, "If we can't get it, we're going to just tip it back to you guys." Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor and Wagner and all these guys will just all run into the football because that was the the thinking of if we can't, if I can't get my hands on it, I'm a I'm a I'm a tip this thing up, and I need guys running to the football. So yeah. Dan Quinn in the defense that he wants to run. He relies a lot on the length of guys in his secondary to be able to close out some of those windows because windows open and close like that for quarterbacks. If I got a guy in here that's looking like this and that quarterback goes, ooh, 
Now, if he pumps and thinks about it, my front seven should be there. I need Randy yeah. Gregory there. Yeah. I need Tank there. I need Big Bull there. I need Urban there because that's ooh, I can't fit that in there because that you know I, I, he's tall, he's long, yeah. and that that plays that plays a huge effect on on your defense being successful. Well, guys, I got I, I can't. He's not in my ear, but he's in Oxnard, and I can hear him say, "Go to break, Heckma," because we didn't <laughs> go to break uh, last Monday. So what we're going to do is going to take our first break. We'll be right back with you guys. Stay with us here on Hanging with the Boys. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yo Quiero, Yo Quiero Guacamole. The Cowboys Way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. How great would it be to travel to watch the Cowboys win on another team's turf? Pretty great. But honestly, just watching the game from anywhere but your house would be fun. Even a hotel bar with some guy named Phil from St. Louis who thinks Oakland still has a team. So whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com. Proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Get the ultimate fan experience for the ultimate Cowboy fan. Join Dallas Cowboys United presented by Globe Life starting at just $20. Join now and get your fan pack, exclusive access to training camp benefits and more. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash United for details and to join today. Thank you guys for staying with us and hanging with the boys. We are back for the second segment and I believe we're going to try to get uh, the great Nate Newton. We've been able to do that for the last Last couple of podcasts get a uh, report from Nate. I know with the pads coming on, Nate may not be answering his phone nah, right now. We may not <laughs> be getting a live look at what's going on right now because <laughs> Nate is standing behind uh, that offensive line. But we'll wait uh, to get Nate on the line to get a more in-depth look at what's going on out in Oxnard, California. But guys, I wanted to talk about Leighton Van Der Esch. I, I thought it was really interesting yesterday when Mike McCarthy was talking about him. There was a question that was asked, is he injury prone or just just unlucky. And, uh, hey, that's a mean question to ask, yeah. right? First of all, that's a mean question to ask, but at the same time, you're looking at a guy that did not get the, the extension signed, so he's in kind of prove it Proving mode. Yeah. yeah, this is this is it for him. But if you're LVE and with Michael Parsons coming on, your mind state going into camp, and Jesse, I'll start with you. You can't worry about the outside noise. Be cognitive of it. Understand it. But just know if your year isn't going spectacular, if you end up on the injury report a lot this year, they didn't go get a guy that high at number 12. Mm. They didn't go get a guy in the third round for those guys to sit on the bench. Like, Mm -hmm. you've been put on notice. Jalen's been put on notice. LVE has been put on notice. You didn't get the fifth-year option. They they, they don't give fifth-year options to guys who don't play well. That's just what it is. There's, 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 there's no other. They can dress it up however they want to dress it up. If LVE was a guy who was balling multiple Pro Bowls, cornerstone, cor- they would have mm-hmm. slapped. They, they would have. His head would have spun. <laughs> spun. 
the, <laughs> at how fast they slapped that that fifth year option on him to keep him there, you know, for a relatively decent price. He he has to understand, and this is the part of um, football is a sport. <laughs> the NFL is a business. Business for sure. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the business part of this, Leighton Vanderish. When you don't do the football part of this thing right, the business part starts to come into play. And now he's dealing with the business part of it. He better be able to handle the football part. Or like I like to say, he'll be finding a new address next year. Yeah. Right. What about you, Isaiah? I mean, I was an injury. I, I sustained a ton of injuries, right? So I'm pretty sure that question probably got posed to coaches in, in meetings behind my back. You can't control injuries. You just can't. You can't. You can label it however you want to label it, right? And he can't worry about that going into this year. Obviously, they drafted guys um, to mostly his replacements, but it's up to him whether or not they want to stay or not. They 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 drafted you know Aaron Rodgers' replacement too, but he decided you sit your sit your butt down, young fella, right? So, <laughs> right so, I mean, so it really right comes down to whether or not you decide to show up and play or not. If an injury pops up, all you can do is control how you come back from it. Now you got to hold that thought because. We lost. We we had him and we lost him. We had Nate. Then we don't have Nate. We had him. We don't. Okay. So I, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. No, I'm just. I'm just pretty much saying you can't control those aspects. So in terms of his mentality going into this season, it's ball. It's show up and ball. And whether you're not, and I know people don't want to hear this. He's not playing just for the Cowboys. You're not playing for the Cowboys. You're playing for your resume. This is your mm-hmm. resume. Now, if the Cowboys decided they want to re-up you next year because of how you showed up this year, then awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll stay home or I'll stay here in ball. Otherwise, there's a whole lot of other teams out there that have checkbooks as well. right? So I'm playing not only for myself and to, to show you guys that I'm a dog, but I'm also playing out there to see whoever else wants to cut the Plan check for, for your future. Year. Absolutely. Yeah. You had talked about uh, Monday that – you know, when you shoulder problems, mm-hmm. there was in the back of your mind you're mm-hmm. worried about that. And this is a, a linebacker with a neck issue yeah. since college. I mean, how? That's, that's a real thing. Yeah. It's a real thing, and I, and I feel for him. And I think we talked about that last year when it came up on the first when it came up on the first game of the season. I wanted to see how he was going to stick his neck in there and hit somebody, and we saw the result of that. Right? He was very hesitant to do so, and, and hey, he got hurt. He got hurt. Well. Kurt, we'll, we'll hold your thought on that because we have Nate on the – before we lose him, oh. we want to go ahead and get him on right now. Uh, hey, uh, Nate Newton, you there with us? Man, it's going to be some big bodies banging. It's going to be some fast clashes. I'm watching to see if, if, uh, if this old Randy Gregor is for real when his Mack truck put them diesel brakes on him at Tyron Steel, baby. I want to see what's going to happen when they – Battle of the Titans happened today, baby. Come on, Nate, man. I'm trying to keep this show on the road. I can't do that, man, with, you, with some big bodies banging. What kind of intro is that, man? <laughs> Nate, yeah, Nate man. they got the pads on today, man. What have you seen so far out there? Uh, bro, they started. They just started. It's, okay. It's, they warming up. You know it's going to take five or ten minutes. So I'm like, y'all call me at the perfect time because I don't be going to be hollering and screaming when I see these bodies go there swinging at each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, yeah. Nate, Nate, what was it like for you uh, back in the 90s with Jimmy Johnson? What was that first padded practice like for you? Uh, after we after – we, uh, what it was like, uh, just like somebody took out a Swiss blade just cut everybody because it was just blood everywhere. <laughs> From people just bring it up and hit each other, knocking each other out. Did it you was look, ugly, man. Did you look forward to ugly. it? You look forward to that first uh, day? Of- you was hyped for the first day of practice. But, you know, we didn't have to have a, a, a acclimation. Is I'm saying that right? Yeah, when you, you get it. used to practicing. You, we, you went in the first day of pads. And the first, and the first thing we did was inside run. Hmm. Defense, offense, running back, everybody except the wide receiver. Everybody else was, was in, and it was full go, knock the fire, bring the heat, let's get it going. That's how we opened up practice with Jim. And when we was through with that first practice, Jimmy said, y'all had a hell of a first morning practice. Let's see, could you do it again this afternoon? And everybody looked at each other like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Man. (laughs) No, but that was then. This is now. It is different. These guys get accustomed to what they need to do. Now they're in pass. We're going to get some one-on-one receiver, cornerback play, safety, tight end play. We're going to get some uh, one-on-one offense, defense, and line, linebackers versus running backs. Guys are coming from third a little bit. Nobody's taking nobody to the ground, but it's it's a different look for them. It's a different look to see how they're going to act and do what they can do. You know, they've learned their offense. They've learned the basic offense and defense. Let's see if they play fast and pass now. 
Nate, is there anyone in particular that you're looking to see today with the pads on? I know you said yes, Randy sir. Gregory, but is there is he the guy that you're like, oh, I'm locked in on this guy. I want to see how he looks with the pads on. Lyle, Lyle Collins at Hill. I want you know he passed the first test, no pads, moving around, a little bit of light pass rush. I want to see somebody go from speed to bull rush on him and see how that jar him and see what he do the next rep. You know what I'm saying? See if he's thinking about it. I see if it's in the old residue in that old hip, you know, that's got him going, you know. So I want to see that. And I know Martin's going to be okay. He looks great. And I want to see what Tyron do. Not today, but will he practice tomorrow? Will they give him a Veterans Day off to start the load management early in the, in the program? All right, Nate, dog, it's your boy Isaiah over here, man. I want to know. All right, obviously, I want to know from your perspective, you know, back in the day, who was a young buck that tried to come through the A-gap and try you out like my, like Michael Parsons is going to try to do it to Zach Martin today? Who was that guy that had to get baptized? <laughs> I had to baptize Kid Norton a couple of times. He get riled up. Kid, Kid Norton like talking noise. He like, you know, you still ain't got him and James Washington. They like talking noise. But James Washington, I get uh, Kid Norton geeked up to try to hit that A-gap. While he's standing back there at safety, we used to bust him up something bad, you know. So, But uh, these guys are ready, man. I, I think uh, from the big difference from last year, fellas, is guys seem to know what to do. We had a red zone uh, scrimmage yesterday, you know, not a scrimmage, but maybe 10 or 12 plays, and the defense was competing well. They was competing good. They got a few interceptions. And I'm not saying that will be the same when guys can rub up against you with the pads on and, really bump into you and come out of routes, you know, with a little shove. But, man, it, it seemed like these guys are ready to compete. I don't know how that translates into the season because things are so much different now, but it, it should be a competitive practice, first padded practice. Hey, Nate, they, they said uh, reporters yesterday were saying that maybe that extra competition on the defense sparked a little more better play among the defense and, and bringing in Malik Hooker, Hooker kind of woke up some of that secondary. Was there kind of a buzz with his signing out there? Uh, no, nah, nah, not really because he, he's on the sideline. I think he's got to go through that period where you have to get adjusted. Mm -hmm. So he may be out of two, a couple of more days. He was over there with his position group. Uh, but these guys have had a great tempo the days that they have been out there and what we've seen these last for they've had a great tempo and that has been the difference in all of the practices in years past. Their tempo is up. Their tempo is up. When they are practicing, they're going. You know, they're not stopping and doing things over. They're letting the coaches coach off the film, off corrections, off the, once they get into the meet they they're coach off of that. Right now they're just going. They're going, they're going, and they look crisp. I mean that that'll change after a couple of weeks up there where they won't get a couple of weeks back. Or next week is the Hall of Fame game. But after a couple of days, you get a little bit of stiff, a little bit sore. So we'll see Saturday because they got Friday off. Nate, do you feel that there is a significant difference just in the environment, in the energy, in the in the in the everything with Dan Quinn out there as a defensive coordinator than you've seen? I know, I know last year we didn't have to see the coaches at that much at practice because of the COVID, but mm -hmm. when Rod Marinello was out there, do you, do you feel a difference? Like, do you feel his presence out there making a huge difference in that defense? Just the things that you see. Like, every day you see defensive players out of practice working on things. Well, you know, you, you'll see that the first day or the second day, but these guys are out on the field a lot more than people think. They have a walkthrough before this practice. Then they walk through, and then they go back in. They have a walk through sometimes in the evening, too. So they are coaching these guys up there, correcting these guys. So when they get on the field, they can feel free to, to, to roam and to play within the confines of the defense or the offense. So that right there, that is different. I mean, they got a new rule where you get these guys for 11 or 12 hours straight. You don't get no breaks. You have to get it done within 11 or 12 hour frame. So these these coaches have fig, figured out how they want to do it. The players have adjusted. We talked to a few players, Ryan. They're like, man, how can you beat this practice schedule? How can you not be fresh? So they they with the new practice schedule. They uh they they come out and they give it up in practice. I'm telling you, uh, you'll miss a rep if you if you over there messing around on the sideline. You can easily miss your rep because guys are trying to be in there getting their reps.
Now, Nate, I gotta, I gotta ask you. For all of us stuck back here in Frisco and not able to see our team up close, who is your dark horse guy to make this team? Who is just every time you look up, this is a number you keep saying, "Hey, man, this guy is making the play." Maurice Kennedy. Maurice Kennedy. And I don't know if they got him on the roster or not. Yeah. But this guy just keep making plays. And uh, uh, another guy that is just keep making plays is Noah Brown. They talking about all. Noah Brown keep making plays, and they they they're not talking about them. They're not the new you know the new kids on the block, but these guys keep making plays. And, and I you know everybody like man yeah you're right. I'm like follow the ball man, and the ball I always seen it. And Dalton Schultz is showing out. Who is that again? Dalton <laughs> Schultz is showing out. You know I'm, he's showing out man. I'm like. Well, a guy that ain't that fast, ain't that big, and ain't that, and ain't that, and ain't that, he, he been showing out. Well, I sure sure appreciate that, Nate, because you know Jesse. You know how Jesse is when he get dug in on something and he won't take no for an answer. And so we were sitting here trying to talk to him about Dalton Schultz, and he is no go on Schultz. So thank you for saying that, Nate. But I mean, but we we got on the pass because I'm 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 a Blake Jarin guy because I think (laughs) Blake can do more. But I'm, you asked me the guys who've been showing out, who's been dark horses, and and that, that's who's been doing it. That's who's been doing it in this camp, you know. And and, I, and it's a few young guys. Uh, 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 Par, Parsons, I mean, every day he's doing something. But like I said, he passed. Come on today, and so people can you know lay hands on you and see if you really about <laughs> this thing, you know. So we'll see if they run through the gaps and uh, and run free because now you can punch some people. Now you can punch some people. I like how that sounds, Nate. Thank you for calling in to the show, man. We appreciate you, man. And, and hopefully we get an opportunity to talk to you on, on Friday, man. Yeah, man. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Jesse, you okay, baby? I'm good. <laughs> All right. Y'all be good now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand that. He asked you that like, you, like your honor asked you, baby, you need something, baby? I can't stand that. <laughs> That, that is awesome. As <laughs> Nate Newton out in Oxnard, California, you're get, keeping us updated on everything that's going on with Cam. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a break, our, our last break, uh, and we're going to open up the next one with the What the Heck, so everybody knows that What the Heck is coming. But hang with us here on Hanging with the Boys. We'll be right back. Hey, Cowboys fans, ready to spice up your next watch party? Bring Yokiero guacamole and be the game day hero. Yokiero means I want, and we know you want, great, fresh-tasting, ready-to-serve guacamole for your home-gating and tailgating events. Made with real avocados and the perfect blend of spices, it will be the star of any party. You can find us at your local Albertsons or Tom Thumb in the deli section. If you can't find it, talk to your store manager and tell them, Yokiero, Yokiero guacamole. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. It's game day. You know what that means. First, kebab prep. Steak, pepper, onion, steak, pepper, onion. Next, a counterclockwise lap around the room. Now, the lucky grease-stained jersey goes on. And lastly, the dance. You know the one. This is a game day ritual no matter where you are. Whether you're traveling to the game or watching from your favorite vacation spot, book a place to stay on Hotels.com and keep the tradition alive and well. Hotels.com, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. When there's work to be done, a real workhorse can make all the difference. Like the Range Boss Package, our 5075E John Deere 75 horsepower tractor features a bell spear and loader and starts at $369 per month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. It works like a horse, so you don't have to. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now, let's get to work. Back to Hanging with the Boys. Cowboy Nation has landed in California to kick off training camp 2021. Are you ready with all new gear? 
Score classics like your favorite player's jersey, tees, and hat, plus exclusive collections and unique accessories. The Pro Shop has more Cowboy gear than anyone in the game. Visit your local Dallas Cowboy Pro Shop or online at shop.dallascowboys.com. And we are back for the final segment here on Hanging with the Boys, and we've been doing something a little bit Having a little fun yeah. uh, here with uh, What the Heck and the Meat. Be professional. I'm with Isaiah, Jesse Holly, and Kurt Daniels doing introductions in order. And uh, what the heck. And so, guys, I was thinking, didn't take me long to come up with this, but I'm watching <laughs> TV yesterday in the news cycle, and I noticed – that every time someone is either looking for a contract extension or they're coming back from an injury or they're talking about coaches, every time you show that opposing player, there is a Dallas Cowboys highlight. Now, I love our guys that work here behind the scenes. These guys get pressured a lot from management <laughs> to come up with good stuff. But I am sick of it. Yeah. You mean to tell me there are only 31 other teams in the league and you cannot find a highlight besides the Dallas Cowboys? That is my what the heck for the day, Kurt. <laughs> you, but you, you only get jealous when, when it's a dime, right? Like, like if, 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 if wifey go – you know, this guy said something to me today, and you saw the guy, and he was butt ugly. You'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> but if it was Idris Alba gave a cop, you'd be like, oh, oh, hold on. He said what? No, 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 no. But that's how they look at the Cowboys. They, we, are, we are. We are that. We're yeah. dime. We're Idris. We're, we're, we, are. we are. We are a dime piece. And so right. guys are always trying to make their significant other, their current situation, a little bit jealous oh or sweeten God. the pot a little bit. I got I to gotta flirt with the dime. I got to show you the dime. <laughs> So you can make so you can come to your senses. Yeah. Yeah. I can only see this Odell Beckham reverse one more time. I want to scream. <laughs> I do not want to see it. I mean, I understand he's coming back from an injury. I get it, but golly, do I have to see it all day, every day. Hey, look, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he was dominating the news cycle yesterday. I'm sure you guys saw that, but every play, every throw that they showed, it Cowboys, here we are. You know, anybody else got a what the heck besides me? Yes, I got great. Yeah, so, no. so, so, my what the heck is is this, and I am a starch defender of Freaky Mike. That's what I call Mike McCarthy. <laughs> um, people, you know, are, are saying like, you know, sometimes Coach McCarthy looks, looks like he's not engaged, mm -hmm. not doing anything. And, and my biggest gripe on that, and my what the heck is, if you want the man engaged. Give him back the job that he came here to do. You took the offense. He is a play caller. Oh, man, you start this argument. Yeah, he is go. a play <laughs> caller. And if you want him engaged, if you want him to look interested in what's going on, give him back a role that puts him back in the middle of everything. Other than that, he's just walking around playing pocket pool. Like, give him <laughs> pocket pool. Give him the job that he, you originally brought. And I get you, you know, Boy Wonder and the, and the Joneses are high on Kellen Moore and he didn't take the job at Boise State this year and all that great stuff. But if you want the man to be engaged, if you want him to be like he's out there doing stuff and not just watching, give the man back the job that he came here to do and let him Jerry, call some Jerry plays. addressed that last week. Jerry addressed that in an interview. And uh, he said that he, he he was very adamant about correct that. He said, nah, 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 let me let me tell you guys. He now he he wanted it that way. Oh, look at Jerry. That's a Jerry. Jerry that's a Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> he does the best Jerry out, man. You know, you know, you know Jerry want to get a point across. He ain't gonna let no, 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 no. Let me let me tell you. No, no, no. This is the way he wanted. Right. He, he that's told me him. When he came in, he had full reign to do what he wanted to do, but he wanted Kellen Moore in that position. So he I, he that's his mm. response to you. Just I'm just saying, just saying that's his response to you, W Dog. It's interesting. So Got I like that. I like that. What the heck? And if if no one else has any other ones, I'll get right to it because I want to ask you guys' his opinion. Now, Kurt, I'll start with you. Only five practices in. What is your evaluation on Micah Parsons from uh, what you've seen so you far? Know, I haven't seen him personally, but just the report sounds like he's doing everything you'd, you'd want him to do as a first round pick. Um, again, pads are going to come on, so we'll really find out what he's got going on but it's got to be exciting my only concern there was was you know he was working out at you know rushing the passer even it said even a couple times defense and tackle he lined up he was you know all three linebacker positions you know we talked I think last year some about 
do you give these guys too much? You bring them along slowly. I mean, are they doing this right? Do they throw everything at him now, or do they should they be taking a little slower with him? Yeah, I mean, obviously we can't get eyes on him right now. The reports have been amazing. My concern is along the same lines as yours in terms of the workload that they're giving him, not on, not from the mental capacity side of things, but most or more so from the physical. Um, you know, as you as he as camp goes along, as he starts becoming more fatigued, I start questioning. Okay, well, how's his nutrition? How's his recovery, right? Um, is his body going to be able to, to respond and regenerate the way it needs to when his body's getting hit from so many different angles, right? There's so many different demands. Special teams is one demand, right? Uh, you know, rushing the pass is another demand. You know, being middle linebacker is another. So I worry about that. That's my only concern for him and just making sure. But we have a great team down there, and hopefully that, you know, they're taking care of business in terms of making sure he's healthy. One of the biggest things about coaching is learning the temperament of your players. Yep. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, like yes, the on-the-field stuff is, but I need to know the difference between Heckma, the difference between Kurt, the difference between Isaiah when I'm coaching you. Because I may be able to come to you and rip you a new one and you'll be just fine. That same approach might crush your spirits and now I've, I've lost you. And I may need to be more hands-on with you to show you how I want it. So that's one of the biggest components about coaching. So for, for Micah Parsons, when you're being thrown, a lot being thrown at him, I think that's something when Dan Quinn was doing his evaluation, talking to James Franklin back at Penn State, uh, other coaches, and now having him, and this was so this is what is so key that we did not get last year, that on the field experience during OTAs and mini camps is now I can see how guys are picking up things and how they're able to retain information and how they're able to process information. And I can go, okay, he's fine. I, I can pile on to the information on him because he gets it and he understands it. Heck, I got to do a little bit more, you know, s slow spoon feeding. Mm -hmm. And so that's the that's the greatest idea. That, that's the greatest thing about when it, when it comes to coaching. The X's and O's are great, but learning the temperament of your players. And and and, and Isaiah's right. A guy coming from an 11, 12 game season where you're not always playing the best of the best, and so a lot of time you're the best player on the football field, to now I'm playing a 17-game season where you're going up against a Tyron. You're going up against a Zach Martin. You're going up against an L uh, LC. You're going up against a Zeke Elliott. Those type of things – kind of that can have a wear and tear on your body over time. And that's the professional part mm -hmm. when it comes to everything Isaiah was saying. When you, when you hear the term of learning how to be a professional, are you eating right? Because that's going to be key for your body's recovery. Are you sleeping? Are you hydrating? Are you doing the things in the weight room to do that? Do you have a masseuse? Do you have <laughs> all these things will play a part in your recovery and for, for young guys, it's about learning that process and learning how to put those things together and put it in your repertoire to have uh, um, your body respond the best way. you got to invest in yourself, too. How long did it take you to, to learn that? Like two years. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't figure that out until like my, my last major surgery. Yeah. <laughs> after after I tore my Achilles, that's when I was like, you know what? This is how you take care of your body. <laughs> yeah. And you got to put money into that. Like that's yeah, that's when you hear guys be like, "Oh, you know, Russell Wilson spends a million dollars. LeBron yep. James spends a million dollars." Tom Brady. Whew. How hard was the food aspect of it? Because I've heard stories that young guys coming in. Des Bryant had an awful diet when he came in. That kind of thing. I mean, Des Bryant was my roommate his rookie year. <laughs> I can for sure tell you, he had the worst diet ever. Like I've seen Des Bryant wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and just had a, a handful of gummy bears. And go practice, and he, he would go ball. So when you have when you have freak athletes like that, they're able to do something like that. But it'll eventually catch up to you. Now, one of the things you, when you mention all of those things about young guys entering into the league, let's couple that with the fact that he didn't even play football last year. Mm -hmm. So I think there's an extra curve to that learning curve. But then you talk about Dan Quinn and his hands-on approach, mm -hmm. and also making sure that when he goes into those one-on-ones, like you said, Kurt, if if you handing him too, are you giving him too much? But if you're coaching is right there with you every step of the way, uh, then I think that is helping a young guy like him as well. But the, the other part is, on this defense is, and, and relating this to Seattle, is he more Bobby Wagner or is he more K.J. Wright or is he both? From the way that they're going to use him, because you hear things about him rushing off the end, you hear about him rushing uh, the A-gap, and then you've also seen him out in coverage one-on-one -on -one with a slot. I think he's more K.J. than Bobby. Bobby, Bobby's not a cover guy. 
Bobby's not going to rush nobody from the edge. Bobby's going to line up in the middle and come down you, come down your face, just right, right, coming right at you, just right down the middle. Uh, KJ's more versatile that way. KJ's going to come on the he can he can rush on the edge. He got them go go gadget arms. He got them orangutan arms, so he can <laughs> he can he can hold you off from a distance. Um, you know he can line up in the a gap and he also can cover your tight end just because he can run. So I think he's probably more KJ than he is Bobby. And being that Dan Quinn coached both of those guys, I guess, and this is maybe a reason why he's trying it all. He's trying to see, you know, who is he? Who who is Michael Parsons? What are, what are your strengths? Let me see what you are as a pass rusher. Let me see what you are as a cover guy. Let me see what you you know as, as someone who's blitzing the a gap or all these different type of things. So now that I have a a true understanding, because however we want to, however you want to slice this thing, Michael Parsons is going to be a part of this defense. Mm-hmm. So if he's going to be a part of the defense and not for at least for the next three or four years, and if this is Dan Quinn's this is this is Dan Quinn's first draftee as a Dallas Cowboy, he's going to play a vital role in what Dan Quinn is as a defensive coordinator here in Dallas. So I need as a coach, Dan Quinn, to find out everything I need to I can about Michael Parsons, what is his strengths, what is his weaknesses, because I, I am hooked to him. He is hooked to me, and he is going to make this thing work for us at that at that linebacker position. And, and this is normal. They're gonna they're gonna drag him through camp. They're gonna run him into the ground in camp. The reason why? Because it's preseason. They're not gonna put him out there that much. They might give him a couple reps oh, just, really? just to feel what I it feels, so. just to see what it feels like. But when you have your top ten, top fifteen pick out, out there, you're gonna drag him through because that's a controlled environment, hmm. right? You can wear him down. You got your training staff right I there. Think you know, want to see the game. Mm-mm. Why you're not going to risk that? No, no different than you would risk risk on you know, your QB one out there. You know, okay. you give him a, you give him a handful of reps, but that's your dog. You can't afford Parsons going down in the preseason, right? So you you drag him through camp, you fatigue the crap out of him, so you know who you're dealing with, right? You up you load him up in terms of information and responsibilities, so you know who you're dealing with. So then when you get to the season, you've already checked the box. I know who I have on my roster. I know the boy can ball. It's not a question mark. Now it's just a matter of okay, I'm gonna drag you, drag you, drag you. The last preseason games, I might let you get a couple reps. Then I'm gonna pull you back and let's get ready to go for this for those 17 hmm. games. Interesting. What well, can I bring up another what the heck? Absolutely. And this maybe ties in a little bit with throwing too much at a guy and our linebacker situation and all that. But the word came out that Keona Neal moved from safety to linebacker mm-hmm. has struggled in coverage. Is this I mean he was a safety, so people are like, well, that's the one area he should <laughs> yeah, be good is right. is, is, is coverage. <laughs> is how does that work? Is it are they throwing too much at him? Is it is this? I mean, it's early, but no. I think that, I think his presence and don't, let's not get this misconstrued. Safeties aren't cover guys. Let's, let's okay. not let's not let's. The reason why they're playing safeties to be a safety to the yeah. cornerbacks, okay. right? Corner guys, they're cover guys. Slide, you know, nickelbacks, those are cor- the cover guys. Safeties are safety blankets. Um, they're bringing him down in a box to be a fast and physical enforcer. That's why they bring him in the box. For. He's being a fast and physical enforcer that can bang some guys, get them guys, and not allow guys to get off the ball, right? What we talked about earlier, cover three has yep. seams, right? So there what do you is. do? Yeah. You bring this guy into the box. He's going to come up there. He's going to get his hands on you. He's going he's gonna to thud you up and not let you get a free release into those seams, right? And so that the safeties can now make sure that they cover over the top. So that's what his purpose is on this team. Fly around at that second level, cover sideline to sideline, because when you start thinking about the, the four guys that they're going to have at that layer, right? Keanu Neal. You got Vander Esch, Parsons, and we got um, um, Jalen. Those are guys. Those four guys can roll now, and they can cover. They can cover that, that fifty-three and a half yards of field pretty quick, quick, fast, and hurry. And they're all going to hit you. That's what they want. They want that second level to be a force to be reckoned with, and they need that front line to be dogs. Did you like that idea of of Neil being moved to linebacker like that? Yeah, because what did this team struggle at last year? Covering running backs out of the backfield, mm-hmm. right? We, we we saw we saw Gibson from New York. Oh God! We saw we saw Gibson. those. We saw. I mean, not from New York, from, from, from Washington. Washington. Yeah. Uh, Saquon's going to be the same thing when he comes back. So I, you know, you had the same thing in in uh, in in, in uh, Philadelphia with their running backs out of the backfield. So you you have to put guys in place. You're building a team to win a championship. But you build a team to win your division first. Mm-hmm. So I have to start. I have to start putting guys in place to eliminate the errors that we had the a year threats. ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a year ago, it was we didn't have a linebacker that can cover running backs out of the backfield. And so now you add a guy like Keanu Neal to the mix. When we go into those different packages, I got a guy now who can who can come up and have the the the, the, the wherewithal, the mm-hmm. flats, who has the feet and and understand how to cover in space, so that when you dump it off to to Gibson, when you dump it off to Saquon, I have a guy who's quick enough, fast enough, and physical enough yep. 
to, to, make to eliminate that threat from a team. And we got, we got killed with that last year. Nick Chubb, I mean, we got killed with all across the board last year with running backs. Right? How many times we? Third and eight. Yeah. Third and 11. And, and just, yeah. and just and so people. Running run back, go get a first down. And just so people understand what that cover three is, because that's what he's going to lean on. Keanu Neal and Jalen Smith are going to be playing those flats. Flats. They're going to be playing the flats. So in the cover three scheme, there are four guys at the second level. Right, and the four guys that I just named, that's who's going to be at your second level. So you're going to have Keanu Neal coming down to your flat, doesn't matter what side, and then you got Jalen Smith going out to the flat. And then if you want to put anything in the middle, they have to deal with Parsons and Van Der Esch. Yeah. That's a that's a heck of a four dudes they have to deal with. So, but you need your your dogs, your runners, right? Neal Smith, my runners. I need those guys going sideline to sideline, really not even sideline to sideline. I need those guys playing hash to the to the sidelines, the side. and then covering, I have my other two guys playing in the middle. They co- is that tight ends their realm too, covering those guys? Or yeah, that- it's just. T- tight ends can be in their realm, um, but typically not. That's going to be Parsons and Vanderess most of the time. Mm-hmm. Those guys can come in. Now, if the tight end decides to try to run a run a corner around or anything like that, yeah, they're going to get hands on them. They're going to make it hard. They, to. They, these tight, no free tight releases. ends against the Cowboys are not going to get free releases. They're going to get banged around. And again, when you look at what he's talking about, <coughs> right, who do you have dropping? You got Vanderess and you got Parsons. A tall, long guy. Those throws are going to have to be absolutely perfect. perfect to go over the top of that linebacker. Like Leighton Van Der Esch is six foot three, mm-hmm. six foot four. He's four. not a he's not a little dude, yeah. right? Michael Parsons is a long arm dude. So those throws, when we're talking about tight ends up the seam, because I have that safety sitting back so high to looking and reading everything. If you're off, if you're off by a little bit, my safety intercepts it. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're short with the throw, I'm hoping that my linebackers are going to get their hands up and it's going to be tipped. So I, I'm looking at that and saying, yeah. how am I going to cover these spaces? I'm getting my fast athletic guys in the flats to cover from hash to sideline. I'm getting my longer guys up the hash marks to eliminate any of that, you know, whether it's a slot receiver or a tight end up the hash. I got my free safety back there manning it all, looking, you know, making you know, you know the, coming up and hitting. Right. Yeah. And then <laughs> now the quarterback and, I'm, and my, my hope is again, like we said earlier, that he thinks about it a half a second longer about making that throw over the top. Here comes Randy Gregory. Here comes uh, uh, Tank Lawrence. And now these guys are making it tough for that quarterback to, to six eight Urban standing up there with his hands up. <laughs> you, you, you see how you yeah, see how yeah. Dan Quinn is putting this thing together. I, I want to close these windows. I want you to have to think just a half a second more from the quarterback position. And then if we can't get home, I got six eight up front. I got six four six five coming off the edge with Ben and, and veracity and, and aggressiveness. <laughs> right. And now right. you got to throw into these perfect Absolutely. windows, and that creates turnovers as well, which we haven't had in this team for a long time. Yeah, when you talk about the defense and looking at Michael Parsons, Leighton Van Der Esch, and guys like that need to make an impact. Throwing off the timing is definitely what you yeah. what we need. And you look at the, those teams, and you just because this is a comparison business. You look at the Tampa Bay's and what they're able to do with their linebackers and things that they can do with White and Levante David. I think that's where the Cowboys are looking to Absolutely. play these guys. And a weapon like Michael Parsons gives you that kind of that's advantage. Huh? And so uh, when you talk about uh, Ken O'Neill, I think one of the things that I'm Warming up to is the ideal of him being someone that can help not only in the passing game, getting out to the flats and those zones that he has to cover, but also our run defense. Run defense was horrible. And that's where we have to make the market improvements and moving a guy that's as fluid as he is and can move the way that he is up to the weak side. I think that helps that defense out tremendously. But guys, that has been our time. We put in some work today. It's been yeah. one hour of hanging with the boys. And so quick. we're not going to get fussed at today, guys, because oh. I got us in and out of breaks. And, <laughs> and, and, and I see all what the... you did there with the in and out your breaks. I see what he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see what he did. Yeah. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. 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 Hey. Coach it to the field. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be back on Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Uh, we'll be back on Friday, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, and like, <laughs> right back. Yeah. Well, we'll be right <laughs> Man, I got so much going on. I got people talking in my ear. I got all got stuff going on. But we'll be back on Friday. Now, you're not going to be here. You're actually. Where am I at? I thought you were going to camp. That's next Friday. That's right. next Friday. Oh, my Friday. bad. You trying to get rid of me that quick? Yeah. Yeah. I'm love, trying to. Love, yeah. Love. yeah. It's always the closest one to yeah. you. You thought you had a quick. Well, yeah. You well. thought you had a quick. So, you know what I'm saying? My camera's right there. Cowboy Nation, <laughs> thank you for hanging with hanging with the boys, and I hope your team win. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!